Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of my selected lectures from my eight hour introduction to Windows Server 2016 for beginners course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to walk through the process of setting up our Windows Server as a print server and then deploying some printers out over Active Directory with group policy objects to all the different users on our domain. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up Server Manager. And then what we want to do is go to Add Roles and Features, click Next, click Next. And then we're going to add print and document services. Now go ahead and check mark that. Click add features. Click next. Click next again. Click next. And then we're going to add internet printing. Click add. The reason that we're going to do this is I'm going to show you how you can manage your printers from a web browser. So click next. And then click install. So let this run. This could take anywhere from a few minutes up to 10 minutes. So I'm going to let this install. I'm going to pause the video and then I'll be back when this is done. All right, so the installation is complete and we can go ahead and close out this window. And what you're going to notice is now we have print services added as a role on this server. So let's go ahead and go to tools and within tools, go all the way down and open up print management. So the first thing that we need to do, and let me go ahead and minimize server manager. The first thing that we need to do in here is we need to add some printers. So the Windows operating system, whether it's Windows 10 or Windows Server, it comes with some pre-added in printers and it's the XPS printer and print to PDF, but there's no actual printers to physically print a piece of paper. So within print management, let me actually make this bigger. Let me scroll this over. Scroll the actions over a little bit and expand this over a little bit. So what you're going to see, there's some custom filters and we can just go ahead and we can minimize those for now because we're not really worried about those. We want to expand out print servers and what you're going to notice is our server DC1. Expand that out and associated with that are some already added drivers, forms. And what forms are these are the different sizes of papers that's going to be available to people that are using our print server. And so we can add more in, we can delete them out, but as you'll notice, there's quite a bit already in there. So all the standard ones are in here and we don't need to touch that for our demonstration. There's a list of ports. And so all the available ports that we can use, you're gonna notice that there are no TCP IP ports. So meaning we don't have any network connected printers on our server and we'll actually set one up. And then we can click on printers, the printers that are associated with our server. And here's the pre-added ones, the Microsoft Print to PDF and Microsoft XPS Document Writer. So what we can do is we can add printers into here. There's multiple different ways within the Windows operating system where we can add printers. We can do it through the settings, we can do it through control panel, or we can do it here. And in the Windows Server, this is a place where I would prefer to do it. So to add a printer, we can either right click in here and say add printer, or we can right click here and say printer. It's all the same. So let's add a couple of printers. The first thing that I want to do is let's add a local printer. We'll add a local printer on an LPT port, a printer port. We'll click next and we're going to say we're going to install a new driver and let's just select a printer. It really doesn't matter what we select because we're not actually installing a real printer. So let's go down to Dell and let's just install a Dell 1130 laser printer. Click next. We're going to share it. So we'll have it shared and we'll click next and we'll click next again and then click finish. Now what I want to do is go up to here. We're not done yet. We're going to right click and we're going to go down to our properties for this and let's scroll this up then we're going to go to the sharing tab and we're going to tell it to list it in our directory so this is going to make sure that we list this within our active directory directory so if anybody wants to actually search for this they're going to be able to find it hit apply and hit ok and now let's add one more printer 
So right clicking here, we'll say add printer. This time we're gonna add a TCP IP printer, a printer that's on our network, and we're gonna type in an IP address. Now, we actually don't have one, so we'll just type in 192.168.10.15, and we'll dis, or we'll uncheck auto detect because this will just slow this down. So what it's going to do, it's going to try to connect to this printer when we click next, try to contact it to determine what type of printer it is and if it has the drivers and everything else for it. So we're going to give this some time. This is going to take a couple of minutes. It's going to kind of go through the process of contacting it and trying to determine uh, what type of drivers to use. And after a while, it's just going to give up and it's going to ask us. So I'm going to pause the video, let this run. And when this is done, we'll continue. All right. So now that the printer installation wizard couldn't find the information, it's going to ask us to input it. So we're just going to select a generic network card, but if we knew what it was, we could select the appropriate one. But because this is a fictitious printer, it doesn't exist, we'll just say generic. We'll click next. And then what we're going to do on the next page is we're going to select the drivers. So this is slowing down. It's a bit unresponsive, but we're just going to let it run. But when it's done, what we're going to do on the next page is, I think what we're going to do is we'll just install an HP LaserJet. So I'm going to let this run. It seems to be a bit laggy. And then when it's done, I'll resume the video. All right, so now we're going to select the type of driver. So it's going to give us options. We could use an existing driver if this was a Dell. We could use a print driver here if it gave us the option. But it doesn't, so we're going to say install a new driver. We're going to click next. And now let's just go down to HP and let's install a laser jet. So let's install a 2550. It really doesn't matter what we select. Click next, click next, click next, and click finish. Now, again, just like we did for the Dell, we're going to right click on this. We're going to go down to the properties and then we're going to go to sharing and we're going to list it in our directory, hit apply and hit OK. All right, so now we have these two printers that we added. Now, let me show you something. Let's go ahead and let's open up this computer and let's click on here and do forward slash forward slash DC one and hit enter. Now what you're going to see, and if I click on this, so this is the way with a forward slash forward slash DC1, that's the way to view all of our network shares on our server. And now what you're going to notice within here is that those two printers that we created and shared, they're now listed in here. So we can see that these two are listed as shared printers on our network. So if a network administrator or help desk support or desktop support personnel wanted to get access to a server, they could simply just do forward slash forward slash DC1 and see these two different printers. All right, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. Now let's get to the fun part of adding this to our Active Directory domain. In other words, deploying it out so everybody has access to these printers. So you'll notice here that there's a deployed printers area, but no printers are deployed. So how do we deploy these? Well, we go to printers, and we right click on the one that we want to deploy. We'll right click and we're going to say deploy with group policy. So I know we haven't talked about group policies and we haven't talked about organizational units and we're going to do that later in the course. But just as a very quick introduction to it, what we can do is we can create these containers called organizational units put users and computers in them, and we can apply group policies to them that we call group policy objects, and they can be all sorts of different things. And then what we can do is we can tell Active Directory to do certain things, to configure something, it could be all sorts of different things, and in this example, to push out a printer to people within that organizational unit, and it'll apply to that organizational unit. Now, since we don't have any of those set up, what we're going to do in this video is there's a default group policy. And what we're going to do is we're going to browse for it right now. What you're going to see is called the default domain policy. This applies to our entire Active Directory domain. So all of our users and all of our computers. And so what we're going to do in this example, because we actually actually really worked with organizational units and we haven't created group policy objects, so we're just going to use this default one. 
And what this will do is when we say OK, this is going to deploy this printer to every single user or computer on our network. And we can pick or choose which one we want to do. We can say per user or per machine. Now, since this is for our entire Active Directory domain, the easiest way is to say per user because you don't have to restart the computer or the client system. After 15 minutes, it'll push this out and it'll apply it to that system. For per machine or per computer, that machine actually has to be rebooted. So the easiest way is per user when we're doing it on the entire domain. So now we're going to say add. You're going to see it listed here. We're going to say apply. It's going to tell us that it was successful. We're going to hit OK and hit OK. And if we click on deployed printers, you're going to notice that it's listed here. Now let's do the exact same for the HP. So we're going to right click. We're going to say deploy with group policy and we're going to browse. We're going to select the entire default domain policy. And you're going to notice as well that is that we can link this to organizational units. So remember that we set up those roaming profiles. If we wanted to have this apply to those, we could. But just for the ease of sake, we're just going to say everybody. We're going to hit OK. We're going to say per user, like we did with the last one. We're going to say add, hit apply, hit OK, hit OK again. And then if we go to deploy printers, you're going to notice both of them are in here. So. At this point in time, we've added a couple of printers. One of these for fake printers, the Dell one is a local printer that's attached to this server. The other one is what we're saying is a network printer. And then what we did with print management is we deployed them. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to load up our Windows 10 machine. We're going to verify that these were pushed out. And I'm going to show you how we can actually do that with a command called GP update. And then I'll show you how we can manage these with our internet interface as well with our internet browser through HTTP. So if you have any questions regarding what we did in this video, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.